Good afternoon. My name is Michal Novakovsky, and today marks my first time as joint CEO hosting the City Project Group's annual earnings call. I will be co-presenting with Piotr Nielubovic. Following our presentation, we invite you to participate in a Q&A session where we will be joined by Adam Kiczynski. Without a doubt, the highlight of last year was the release of Cyberpunk 2077, Phantom Liberty. The launch of the expansion, along with significant changes brought to the base game by Update 2.0, resulted in a relaunch effect, generating interest comparable to other major titles debuting in 2023. The expansion was enthusiastically received by gamers, as well as critics, with rave reviews and multiple industry awards, including two golden joysticks for best expansion and best trailer. In terms of sales performance, we've already had the pleasure to announce that Phantom Liberty sales had topped 5 million copies in 2023. Achieving such a major milestone in such a short window proves the game's quality and the strength of the Cyberpunk franchise. Towards the end of the year, we also released Cyberpunk 2077 Ultimate Edition. The bundle includes the base game, the Phantom Liberty expansion, and all updates and free DLCs released to date. It offers a way for players to experience the best Night City has to offer. Cyberpunk 2077 Ultimate Edition is available digitally and physically for current generation consoles and PCs. Now let me give you a peek at the bigger picture. By 2023, Cyberpunk 2077 sales had already surpassed 2.2 billion PLN in revenues. The game continued to attract gamers' interest, held by regular updates and franchise flywheel activities, including Cyberpunk Edgerunners, the Netflix anime series. Last year, owing to the successful release of Phantom Liberty, Cyberpunk 2077 further raised the revenue bar to 3 billion PLN. We are confident in the strength of our product. Supported by the franchise flywheel, we expect it to generate solid revenue flows for years to come, solidifying its status as a long seller. And while we're on the topic of a franchise flywheel, I'd like to remind you that last year we initiated collaboration with Anonymous Content, a global media production company. Together, we will work on a live action project set in the immersive world of cyberpunk. Having summarized the main events of 2023, let us now turn to the future. It's time to give you an update on where we stand with each of our upcoming projects. Let's begin with the Witcher franchise. Polaris will kickstart a new trilogy expanding the universe presented in past Witcher games. At the moment, this is our most developed project. Although we're still in the pre-production stage, our plan is to begin production in the second half of the year. Next, we have Sirius, the game developed by the Molasses Flood in Boston, with support from our developers. Last year, we defined a new framework for this project, which is why Sirius is currently in the early pre-production phase. The last project from the Witcher franchise, codenamed Canis Majoris, is a remake of the first Witcher game. It is being developed by the Fools Theory Studio under the supervision of CD Projekt Red. Work on this iconic game is now at the conceptual stage. It's worth noting that the title will be built from the ground up using Unreal Engine 5, and that it will use the toolset we have been developing for Polaris. Moving on to Cyberpunk franchise, as you may already know, Orion is the codename for the sequel to Cyberpunk 2077. In the fourth quarter of 2023, we opened a hub in Boston and kicked off work on the game. It is currently at a conceptual phase supervised by seasoned studio veterans previously involved in development of Cyberpunk 2077 and Phantom Liberty expansion. Notably, this February, we announced that the Boston Hub would be hiring accomplished game industry professionals with experience in developing top-of-the-line AAA projects. And last but not least, let's shed more light on our third IP, Kadar. At the moment of publication of our strategy update in late 2022, we had a small strike team laying the foundation for this new IP. This work is steadily progressing and the team is getting bigger. We are currently exploring key pillars of the game and the IP is in the conceptual phase. We're really excited about what's coming up. Since I've just updated you on our projects, let me now briefly walk you through the current engagement of our dev teams. Compared to our previous update provided in November, 
The team responsible for maintenance of Cyberpunk 2077 and Phantom Liberty has shrunk, with developers being reassigned to other projects following the release of Phantom Liberty and Update 2.0. The Polaris team, on the other hand, has grown to over 400 developers, reaching its target size for entering the production phase. This is scheduled for the second half of the year. As for the series team, it has not changed in size compared to the last update. We are also introducing new categories for Orion and Hader, as these projects are growing, along with the number of developers involved. In addition, a completely new group of developers has appeared on the chart, under the Shared Services label. These are central teams, which become involved in various projects at different stages of production. They are not fully embedded in any particular project. Instead, they provide additional capabilities which can be shared among red teams. They can handle tasks such as localization, UX and QA, as well as development of essential tools and technologies. Currently, half of this group serves the needs of Polaris, but this will fluctuate over time as other projects grow in size. With regards to our recruitment plans for our 2024, we plan to maintain the current employment structure. Recruitment will mainly focus on our Boston hub, which is still at an early stage, and we are building its structures. Finally, I'd like to take this opportunity and thank everyone who has been there with us for good and bad, our dedicated team, amazing fans, and supportive shareholders. Your support means the world to us. Now, let's move on to the financials. I'll hand it over to Piotr. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Michal. Let's start with our consolidated profit and loss account on slide nine. In 2023, our consolidated sales revenue driven by Cyberpunk 2077 and Phantom Liberty reached 1 billion 230 million zloty. That's nearly 30% above the revenues of the strong comparative period, which was marked by the release of Cyberpunk Edgerunners Anime and the Edgerunners update. This means that 2023 was our second consecutive year of sales growth after the release of Cyberpunk and also our second best year ever. The launch of the expansion in 2023 made a big impact not only on CD Projekt Red, but also on GOG.com, which enjoyed a 25% sales revenue increase versus the preceding year. Our cost of sales increased as well, primarily driven by the initial amortization of Phantom Liberty and accelerated amortization of the base edition of Cyberpunk. During the second half of 2023, we amortized a significant 40% of Phantom Liberty development budget and 40% of remaining Cyberpunk 2077 undepreciated expenditures as of the end of June 2023. Hence, the more than double increase in costs of products and services sold in 2023. Moving on to operating costs. Our selling expenses increased by 54 million zloty to nearly 244 million. This was mainly driven by a 116 million zloty total budget dedicated to Cyberpunk and Phantom Liberty marketing and promotion in 2023. As regards administrative expenses, apart from salaries and general costs growth, the increase in this category was driven mainly by costs related to the introduction of our new incentive programs, as well as expenses on early phase works on new products, so-called research phase, growing especially towards the end of the year when after the release, the Phantom Liberty team started relocating to new projects. Moving further to other operating income and expenses, the positive balance of nearly 30 million zloty was supported by the partial reversal and partial write-off of our development expenditures related to project series. As discussed during our Q1 call, all in all, serious impairment adjustments improved our EBIT for this year by nearly 19 million zloty. This year's results were further supported by financial operations. The reported surplus here at 69 million zloty came from usual drivers such as interest from deposits and T-bonds, but also from bookings related to the merger of the project with Spoko. As discussed during our call dedicated to Q3 results, we included Spoko's current year costs and revenues in Tedeprojects 2023 profit and loss statement, 
This decreased our 2023 results by approximately 3 million slot. Poco retained earnings decreased our equity in the retained earnings positions as if Spoco had been part of the project in the past. We also included Spoco's assets and liabilities among the project's assets and liabilities. Naturally, all transactions between Spoco and the project were eliminated bookwise. And therefore, as we recorded Spoco's assets and liabilities, as well as current and historic negative results in our books, we also reversed the historic write down of Spoco shares in the amount of 27 million slotted, which is part of the discussed financial income line item. Moving further to our income tax. Although the absolute tax amount in 2023 was higher than in 2022, it was actually proportionally lower when compared to the gross result before taxation. The effective tax rate in 2023 was slightly below 11%, mainly thanks to the application of the IP box tax regime. All in all, our net profit for 2023 amounted to 481 million slot. 39% more than what we achieved in the very solid comparative period. Net profitability of the Cedepry Red segment exceeded 45%, while for GOG, this factor was close to 4.5%. I always like to take a long-term perspective of our results. Please take a moment to look at the chart on the next page, which illustrates Cedepry Group's consolidated revenues for the last five years. All the efforts to improve and update Cyberpunk to enrich the universe with new merchandise and the genre's anime and the release of Phantom Liberty and the Ultimate Edition all paid off, resulting in sustained revenue growth in the recent years. Moving on to the chart on the next page, number 11, which presents something I'm also very proud of. In recent years, solid revenues allowed us to achieve steady profits, which we have been reinvesting to finance the development of new games and projects. Some of the surplus was also shared with our shareholders in the form of buyback or dividend. Actually, we shared 1 billion zloty with investors over the last five years. Also today, the company's management board decided to recommend to the general meeting the payment of a 2023 dividend to shareholders. The proposed amount is 100 million zloty. Let's now move on to the next slide, number 13, our consolidated balance sheet. On the assets side, first, expenditures on development projects, the core of our business. The balance here increased by 52 million zloty in 2023. This was mainly due to our works on Phantom Liberty, Polaris, and Sirius. The new developments were responsible for a 265 million increase parallel to the decrease coming from depreciation of 232 million zloty, driven mainly by Cyberpunk and Phantom Liberty. At the same time, among current assets, our trade receivables grew by 28 million zloty thanks to higher sales this Q4 versus the Q4 of 2022. And last but not least, overall, the most significant increase on the balance sheet is the total value of cash, deposits, and treasury bonds, which are included in the three asset items marked with an asterisk. The total is summed up under the table and amounts to 1,309,000,000 zloty as of the end of December 2023. I will have a cash flow dedicated slide to give some more insight on our main cash flow drivers last year. Moving forward to the second part of the balance sheet, slide 14. Despite paying the dividend, our equity increase driven mainly by the profits of the current reporting period up to 2.4 billion zloty. At the same time, our total liabilities decreased by 35 million zloty. The decrease was distributed quite evenly between the three subcategories presented in the table. Now, please move on to the next slide, number 15. So the prior credits, expenditures on research, development, and service of released games presented here annually since 2021. Over the time, we've limited our involvement in servicing our games, shown in yellow, and shifted towards development of new games, painted blue. At the end of 2023, we also accelerated research works on new projects, among others, Orion, Canis Majoris, and Haider, included in the green slides. We expect this category to grow further in 2024. And finally, 
our simplified cash flow on slide 16. Cash-wise, the 481 million zloty in net book profit was supported by 245 million zloty in depreciation and amortization for the period. At the same time, cash-wise, we invested nearly 273 million zloty in the development of new games and technologies. During the reporting period, we also invested 58 million zloty into tangible and intangible assets mainly into servers, network infrastructure, and developer workstations, but also in construction works on the Celebrite campus in Warsaw, aimed at its further adaptation to our specific game development needs. Another 58 million slot comes from the change in receivables, liabilities, and provisions. As it was visible in the balance sheet slides, we experienced a rare situation of growing receivables and decreasing liabilities. This should support our 2024 cash flows, but as far as 2023 is concerned, this change was accountable for nearly 58 million zloty cash decrease. During 2023, we also paid out a dividend of almost 100 million zloty. After all, our financial reserves kept in cash, bank deposits, and T-bonds increased by 218 million zloty over the reporting period, reaching 1.3 billion zloty. That's all from me for now. We can now move on to the Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to ask a question, please press star one on your telephone keypad. Please make sure your mute function is not activated in order to let your signal reach your equipment. So that's star one if you wish to ask a question. Our first question today is coming from Nick Dempsey, calling for Barclays. Please go ahead, sir. Your line is open. Uh, yeah, good, good evening, guys. I've got two questions, please. Um, the first one, have you considered licensing either of your big IPs to third parties to make mobile games? Mobile hasn't really been a, a big feature of, of, of your development internally. So is that something that we could perhaps expect a one-off licensing fee at some point for that kind of project? Um, and the second question, is when we're thinking about expenditure on development projects in 2024, um, can we assume that the Boston project that you've referred to here is going to lead to a notable step up in the line there or just a, a small step up? Uh, hello. Uh, hi, Nick. So I'm going to take the first one for sure, the, the licensing of the IPs. Uh, uh, to make mobile games. So, so the answer is, is pretty simple here. Uh, the answer is yes, we, we are considering such move. And uh, in fact, we, we were pursuing uh, through conversations, you know, uh, opportunities like that. We have nothing to announce just yet, but uh, when the time comes, we would. And as of, uh, you know, a one-off or other business model, you know, related to any such potential partnership, you know, uh, 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 we would not comment on the specifics uh, here, to be honest. Plus, there is nothing in place that we are talking about. So, but there is no like pre-designed. Maybe I'll frame it like that. There's no pre-designed business model we're looking at in this case. Uh, uh, whether one-off or some shared profits, you know, that's that's another story. But when the time comes, we'll definitely share information. Thank you, Mr. Dempsey. Our next question okay. is coming from Alec. There was one more question regarding the Boston project. Oh, very sorry, sir. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, I assume the question was related to the new team uh, that we uh, started uh, in Boston that is working on the Orion project. Uh, so comparing this uh, for 2024 to 2020, 23, yes, we will see uh, an increase of people, an increase of investments going there. As in 2023, the, the team was not existent. Uh, still, the project is planned to be in the research phase, as it was mentioned by Michal during uh, the uh, first part of the call. Thank you much, sir. Our next question is coming from Alexei Filipov, calling from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Yes, hello. Thank you very much, and uh, congratulations with a very uh, strong set of results. 
I have a few questions. Uh, the first one is uh, on your incentive program. So basically your uh, new KPIs for the next stage of the incentive program. I think they imply that you plan to release uh, one game in 2026 and another game in 2027. Uh, maybe you can comment whether it's a fair assessment of your uh, plans. Uh, that's my first question. Uh, another question would be on the remake of the original Witcher. Uh, how many developers are working on that project now? And maybe you could talk about uh, the amount of work needed to be done for that project, given it is a remake and not a standard game. And my final question would be on that uh, media project that you talked through. Uh, maybe you can share some additional color what is happening there. Um, what type of uh, monetization bring this partnership with anonymous uh, content production studio? Is it just uh, one, one of uh, payment and licensing agreement? Um, so, so how it can uh, can be monetized if if this project goes through? Thank you very much. Hi, Alexei Adam Kiczynski. Uh, I'll take the the first one. Oh, the first one and the second so in terms of uh, incentive program uh we can't comment on this i mean we, of course we have our plans and th those those goals are uh, based on those plans but we cannot just confirm any releases time will come and then we'll start talking about dates but uh, as our st strategy states uh, we, we show where we are heading with with franchises and and developments but we cannot unfortunately talk anything about and um, about specific specific release dates um and the second one uh the team on um on uh remake uh, it's mostly done externally by the molasses flood so it's on them it's it's sorry Pool theory, yes. Sorry, sorry. I, I, I confused the name. Pool theory, of course. Pool theory and Kanye's uh, Kanye's Majoris, uh, which is which is remake to 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 Witcher one. And Pool theory is independent, and they built uh, their team to work on this. We are in early phases, uh, conceptual uh, pre pre production phases. I mean, it's 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 not development yet um but uh so we are preparing designs with them uh and that's so so it's a it's an early phase and that's all we can we can we can share with you as for now and the third michael will take that okay thank you uh thanks adam uh yeah i'll respond to the media project uh question with the anonymous content so uh uh, there is not a lot of additional color, as you put it, I can I can give here, but I can definitely mention there's been a steady progress actually in that project. Uh, the announcements in, in projects like that, they usually comes when we reach certain points uh, uh, that actually are useful to the uh, to the moment of making such announcements, meaning they actually have some supportive uh, supportive meaning for the for the for the so-called patch package that we're preparing here uh and that we later on will be will be looking to uh position with uh with a partner that's going to be responsible for basically uh displaying the project to the to the to the outside world distributing it uh so we're not at this stage obviously and when it comes to the question of uh monetization it really is you know uh, uh something we we definitely wouldn't comment on so uh no additional color in this one but the progress is actually yeah. pretty pretty steady here. We're happy with where we are. Yeah, that, that, that's very clear. Thank you very much. Maybe if I can squeeze one last uh, question. You mentioned that uh, the most developed game is Witcher 4. Uh, can you uh, say what is the second most developed game in your pipeline? Well, yes, I can, I can, I can mention. I mean, uh, just just looking at the headcount, the the second one is is project series developed by the molasses uh, flood in in Boston. So, so that's very that helpful. Will be the Thank you very much. Second most. Thank you.
Thank you, Richard Filipov. Ladies and gentlemen, as a reminder, if you have any questions or follow up questions, please press star one at this time. We'll now move to Sebastian Patulea, calling from Jeffries. Please go ahead. Good evening, everyone, and um, thank you for taking my questions. I've got three, please. Um, firstly, if I may follow up on a on a previous question, please. Um, you're expecting Witcher 4 to enter the production phase in the second half of the year, and on average, it takes the industry two to three years to go from production phase to launch. Would you say that's what we should expect in this case as well, or should we expect more given you're working with a new engine that probably takes time to learn? It's also a large title and, and so on. Um, secondly, please, um, can you please discuss some of the risks that you're planning to take or some of the innovative elements of Project Polaris? Uh, even if you'd be painting it with a broad brush, that would be really helpful. And my last question, please, it's regarding cloud streaming. Um, what are the economics of the partnership that you've recently announced with Amazon Luna, please? Thank you. All right, I'll, I'll try to, uh, to take care of the first two questions. Um, when it comes to the, to the question about the years, I, I can't really respond that question with a precision that you probably would be hoping for because do, doing so would basically mean leading on to the release date, which is which is not something that we, we've historically done uh, and, and are not going to do it right now. I mean, really revealing the release date is basically part of the marketing plan, and uh, 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 that's not something we're, we're willing to do here. Now, when it comes to the risks of innovative elements, um, you know, making a making, making new game is, is, is always a creative risk, especially since we're trying to push new new boundaries and explore new fields, do something we haven't actually done before. So, so I'd say it's in that. This is a pretty broad uh, uh, paintbrush stroke for sure, but uh, you know, I cannot go into too much detail without actually talking about the game per se. But, uh, but basically, uh, I guess what I'm saying is you should not be expecting just a, you know, which are free in new clothing of sorts. I mean, it's, it's actually, uh, of course, we're, we're building on the shoulders of what was done before and on the learnings of what was done before, but uh, we will be adding new things, new elements, new gameplay elements, new mechanics that you have not seen in our previous games so far. And I, I'd say doing those new things is always a risk. It's not... It's not just you know repeating what was done before, and uh, I'll pass with the third one to uh, I think Adam Kiczynski. Thank you, Michal. Uh, so it was about GOG and uh, Amazon Luna, and uh, the collaboration between them um, aims to enhance game sales through Amazon's uh, exclusive customer base, obviously, uh, while maintaining uh, the existing revenue share model for developers. So um, this collaboration seeks to elevate GOG's market presence and um, let's call this draw in high LTV users, while at the same time bolstering GOG's value proposition to game developers and, and publishers. So in practice, uh, this arrangement grants GOG access to uh, Amazon's Ex, a huge customer base and uh, and device ecosystem, in, including Fire TV and TV Sent More, um, and gamers who subscribe to Amazon Luna can play their GOG games through Luna. Um, of course, I'm talking about uh, streaming service, um, and that obviously enhances uh, their experience. And uh, additionally. Game publishers associated with GOG are participating uh, in the Luna program. Th th those who are par par participating in the Luna, Luna program uh, can benefit from different forms of exposure through Amazon channels. So, so you know, it's it's a very 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 collaborative and uh, valuable um, proposition for 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 all parties around. But of course. That's that's all we can say without any revealing any any details, business details between us and and Amazon. May, may I please follow up? Thank you very much for that. May I please follow sure. up? Um, are you allowed, please, to discuss any any of the economics, anything about commissions or or 
uh, how does it work? Because um, frankly, I, I, I don't know anything about it. No, unfortunately, unfortunately not. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Petulia. As we have no further audio questions at this time, let's turn to call or to questions that were submitted over the web. Thank you. We will now be taking our web questions. So the first question comes from Piotr Zielonka, Southern Thunder Bank. Congratulations on your results. My question relates to cost outlook for 2024, especially employment level. You have above 600 game devs and around 1,200, 1,300 total employment level. Do you think you could uh, still optimize employment, especially in X game devs departments, despite still despite 10% layoffs already announced last year? Adam, you volunteered. Yeah, I'll, I can I can take it. Uh, uh... I'm not pretty sure what kind of uh, optimizing employment uh, um, the, the the question is referring to, but I would say that um, we are, as for now, very well tuned for for the phases our projects are in. So for this year, uh, we feel good, and I would ex I would expect kind of flat year in terms of uh in terms of the size of, of of the teams of course with some exceptions of course boston team uh, is, is growing but generally overall uh, within the group uh, i would expect fairly fairly flat year in terms of of the of the size of the team mm -hmm. and that's it because there, i thought that was a question about cost but not yeah that's it thank you very much Okay, the second question comes from Piotr Zielonka. Again, uh, any update on AI initiatives on how they could impact employment? Uh, we internally uh, think that uh, it can fit our concept of having not two gigantic teams working on games. I mean, we, we, we were sharing this, I mean, we've been sharing this for quite, quite a while that we want to keep our teams working on being games fairly not too huge. I mean, like 400, 500 team members, core team members, and uh, letting them enhancing their capabilities with AI is, is a great opportunity. So so it fits our 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 strategy uh, so th that's something we can we can say we we are not expecting any um cost cutting in terms of uh, cost cutting sorry in terms of shrinking any uh, any teams because of 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 the the ai okay a hey, third question comes from Piotr Poniatowski, MBank. Is just 17 developers working on Cyberpunk 2077 enough for support of the game? Uh, Adam Kiczynski again. Yes, it's enough. It's definitely enough. We are finally, uh, since last year, very happy with, uh, with the state of the game both uh, the base game and Phantom Liberty, Phantom Liberty from the very beginning, actually. And uh, we think that this team is, is enough. Uh, it might even shrink a bit uh, because as for now, at least we, 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 uh, we are not planning any, any further big updates, but of course we are still looking at, at this game and things one day might, might change, but this, that's, as for now, 17 is enough. Thank you. 
Uh, as it seems we have no more questions, I would like to thank you again for joining us today. And if you have any follow-up questions, feel free to contact our great IR team. And uh, I wish you all a nice evening. Uh, goodbye. Thank you.